Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, we're going to tour the main garden. It's gonna be 79 degrees today, 54 tonight, perfect temperatures for the fall garden. And I've basically cleaned out most of my garden getting ready for the fall. This is a hybrid tomato. It's a gladiator hybrid, I believe. It's the subject of a video series of just showing the growth from beginning to end. This was planted into clay soil, not super well prepared. I wanted to show people that you don't need to do anything fancy. And by taking care of less tomato plants, sometimes you can really help them grow and do wonderfully. This is you, was probably planted around the beginning of July. It's been growing extremely well, no disease on there, tons of tomatoes. You can see some right down there, some right over there. I don't even have to spray this a whole lot because I've been able to water it, keep it pruned. It's really doing better. And sometimes that's the, the message that the garden wants to give you. More tomato plants cared for in an okay way aren't as good as less tomato plants cared for extremely well. And it really does make a difference. You can see how beautiful that plant is. It's not getting, getting any extra treatment compared to the plants that you're gonna see in my garden, except it's getting a lot more watering. And I think that makes a huge difference. Garden has been cleaned up. I'm gonna be doing a series on fall gardening, how to grow in cold frames. The cold frame in here is sunken which I'm gonna be able to grow, and I'm gonna grow in pots maybe, like the purple pot right there, down in the bottom. Because this is down in the ground, it's gonna stay a lot warmer than the same cold frame over here on the surface. So I'll be able to do some winter gardening in this, but I'll be able to continue to grow through the really cold periods of January and February, I believe, by growing down in here. So that'll be kind of cool. If you wanna subscribe, I'll show you, you know, how that goes over the rest of the year. Peppers continue to do extremely well. I mean, we can just take a quick look. This is going to be a keeper every year. It's going to be peppers in there. And, you know, they look beautiful. You can see here's one that just rotted away because I'm getting so many I don't need them, which is always a good problem. Be doing a quick video this week on taking care of the canes raspberries, blackberries, and the blueberries. But just real quick, I mean, I basically will just scatter organic granular down here, give them a drink of mere acid, which is a chemical fertilizer, it does not harm the plants. Abusing chemicals, as I always say, the chemical fertilizers will be a problem, but not for bringing acidity to your blueberry uh, bushes. So they'll get a drink of the acidic water soluble and then we'll get organic granular thrown down. I have compost, but in this case, I think the granular just scattered all around is better. It'll just break down over the months. It'll seep into the roots. I also mulch heavily around here. So the mulch is always breaking down and feeding the blueberry bushes. They did really, really well this year. Quick look at the ginger. That's gonna be ready to harvest in a couple of weeks. You really wanna give this 100 days of growing. So I start my rhizomes early. You've seen videos on that and they've just taken off. There's another place, I'll show you them too. That might, and that's a place that's been neglected. So maybe the theme for today is neglected plants. I'll, I'll talk about that as we go through. Fruit trees have to be cut back, but I'm gonna wait for them to go dormant. So this section I think looks pretty good. Strawberry plants are all being propagated, watered, they got fertilized, and I think that they look good. For those of you that are interested, the Rusted Garden Red, the tower back there, has not been around for two years because it's a limited color. It's coming back, I believe, in October. As soon as I get the dates, I will let you know. Cleared out the beans that were growing over here. A lot of the beans are drying. I'm doing that to, you know, have dry beans for the winter in theory. I do that every year and make um, a couple pots of bean soup and they're just delicious. Let the beans dry, harvest on a dry day, you're gonna have plenty of beans to make soups and use over the winter. Tomatoes in here, they're chugging along. They've got some disease on them, um, some dieback. They're just not getting watered as much, but still lots of tomatoes getting produced. Let's go into here, because you know, this is one of the best. This is a, a yellow apple or apple yellow. Um, it's an All-America Selections winner. So many coming off of here. You can see that some of them are rotting on there. I'm gonna be limiting the number of cherries I grow next year. 
So this was where I originally had my first fall garden. Rabbit got in, destroyed everything, just was a mess. I'm going to pull out the um, blackberries right there. I've cut back that tree. That's a fig tree that never produces. All kinds of growth. Great for growing the wood to smoke meats with if you're into like smokers. But it's not productive, so it's going to get removed because back along there I can grow something else that I can eat. This will all be redone in some way. I've been thinking about how to use that spot, but what I learned was I thought, hey, it'll be great. I'll grow a fall garden in there in the summer, towards the end of the summer, as fall's coming. But because it was so shady, it just got hammered by slugs and snails, even though I've just treated for them last week. And it was a bit of a mess. There's more insect pressure going from summer to fall. So that's something you, you may not expect because when you grow from winter, spring, early spring into summer, a lot of the pests are still dormant. Jalapenos, incredibly well. One watermelon left. Um, the fruit on that one, the watermelon there did rot off. Have a cucumber tucked in there. We're gonna see how that does. You'll notice that a lot of my plants have powdery mildew. Powdery mildew, really doesn't show up in my garden until later August or early maybe September when and it can come earlier at times but with the high heat it just wasn't around so it was waiting for the right temperatures I'm not spraying a whole lot I'm just kind of letting things kind of fade out these are peanuts they'll be pulled out when the greenery dies back <laughs> I went in and hacked my apple tree back it's supposed to be nice lateral branches going along the fence, but it got chaotic. So I've actually, you know, and again, don't follow me on pruning, but like I know like where the apples will blossom and flower like off of something like that. So I've cut it back, leaving places where it looks like apples will form. And this will be my project. And I'm using wire to shape the branches so that they're gonna grow you know, laterally with the fence. Or is that horizontal? Well, you know what I mean. And that will be the shape that this tree is going to stay. As it gets into better shape and does better, I'll be cutting out all the bits and pieces in there that don't really belong. I also changed this trellis. In fall is a great time to, to start really changing your garden around. This trellis used to go this way and I would have to wedge myself into there with growth right here to harvest. It made no sense. So by simply turning it, I'll be able to grow up this way. And when I walk by, I can just reach in and take care of whatever's going on. I'll also be able to use this as shade to create more shade down there and maybe grow lettuces longer into the summer. So I'm really thinking about ways to turn things around. And you can see right here, I mean, look at all these beans that are going to be dried. And you can dry green beans, you can dry any bean. They're perfectly um, tasty, they do fine. Midnight snack tomato, doing okay. Last of the watermelons, well I keep saying that, so that's one plant over to my left, one right here, still growing. Pulled out the zucchini plant that was here, pulled off a couple of zucchini. And I'll just move slowly, you can just see how the garden is transitioning over. And these tomatoes are doing pretty good. A little bit more water over July taking care of them. They would look like the tomato plant that I showed you in the beginning. Watering is really, I think, the biggest mistake we make. We don't water enough. Some more watermelons going pretty well. Replacement, yellow squash that has to come off that's over mature. You can see the powdery mildew on there, on the outer leaves. This guy I'll probably spray. I'd like to try and keep that, see what happens. Super hots, loaded, parsnips. That's a asparagus plant that needs to be pulled out of there. Looks pretty good. Tomatoes, right back there. That's the rusted garden compost tomato. I believe I said before, these are Matt Wild cherries, I think. I don't know what they are, but they come back on their own. They don't start really growing till later July. Just look at all these beautiful tomatoes. This is one cherry that I'm gonna keep growing. Of course, I'll let it kind of grow in here and I have to keep hacking it back, but massive plant over there, massive plant over here, wonderful cherry tomatoes, all grown by nature, meaning they self-seeded and they're just doing their thing. 
Still lots of peppers in there. Beans, another round of beans. This space will get cleared out. Not sure if I'll use it. And there's a good, you know, shot of how the trellis has changed, which makes it so much easier just to get in there. I don't, sometimes you like wonder why didn't you think of stuff before? Sometimes it takes years, you know, you'll be doing the same thing and then you'll all of a sudden get this idea of like, hey, it could be done better this way. That's what gardening's about, is really learning to do more or really learning to grow more by learning, which means you can't expect to know everything year one, year two, year three, even year five, even year 10. You just keep learning and your garden gets better and better. Last year, I grew my basil in here. It was protected from the beans when the beans had leaves. And these plants are massive. I've cut some of them back. I'm letting them go now to collect seed. I'm gonna cut these back once I get seed pods, but look, still getting basil massive plants I, I just didn't need it all and it didn't get killed off over the summer which it often does kept up on the watering especially with consecutive 95 plus degree days just put in some more radishes in there french breakfast that is rosemary different variety some more radishes and this i don't know if it'll be for the winter or the fall but next year i'm going to start a series similar to this garden ramblings will still go on so I can just walk around but I'm gonna do more of a show format where I have a timestamp table of contents in the video description so that I can go over maybe planting leeks and I can go over putting in French breakfast radishes and I don't have to make you know nine separate videos I can just kind of do the show it'll have different parts to it and then you can just zip through that those timestamps and find what you want to you know what you want to watch and this will allow me to do more just kind of do more in a garden and have I think more elaborate videos took out the butternut squash look at all that that was from two plants rosemary in there too that was all growing in here and like I was saying in one of these episodes I think I'm going to build some sort of trellis oh, we've got the sun in the way let's change this a little bit going to build a trellis up here maybe eight feet tall all the way down and I'm going to grow something across the top this will be for growing shadier plants but I'm thinking about the design you know what do I want to change over everything in here is doing really well beans more melons these are the sugar baby types the green beans that are doing best have never been sprayed and they grow every year right in there some of the beans drop down there when I'm composting and they come back. So I'm still picking green beans to cook, you know, standard way, but I'm also letting so many really turn or really dry so that I can have them for the winter. I moved my strawberry towers. I shifted them a little bit. The block down there, the concrete slab was starting to tilt. They were tilting, but I have two of them here now. And it was right over here. This is a pumpkin, by the way, that I was really experimenting with to see how fast it grows. I'm going to grow a pumpkin next year. This was put in maybe mid-July. It's massive. I don't know if I'll get any pumpkins, but it was a test run. It's doing really well. Corn looks good. And again, opened up this space. So what I did was, right in there, right back there was the red tower. Also, in between, right there, there were some fabric pots. I just opened up the space. I want more airflow here. Moving the container, the vertical tower, will make a difference. I wasn't utilizing it. There was too much shade over there. Everything was just kind of muddling along, which, you know, open up the space. I don't need to cram everything in there. And because it's open now, I'll have better airflow, better opportunity to manage diseases. I have collards in the containers now, switch them over from whatever was growing in there. This is cantaloupe, another experiment. It's doing pretty good. Radishes in there. I'm getting peas already forming in there. So this space is being utilized. Back there, cow peas that have grown themselves. They're a great bean, even though they're cow peas. They're basically beans in here. Here they are right over here. So all the cow peas here have self-seeded. And it's just gonna to be tons of dried beans that I'm gonna be able to have. 
We'll go over there in a second. I want to show you the lettuce that's growing over there. Let me spin around a little more slowly than I normally do. I mean, the garden is doing well. The towers are all filled with romaine lettuce, some loose leaf lettuce. I'm going to grow lots of leafy greens. That's what I'm mostly interested in. Cherry tomatoes, doing pretty good. That one self-seeded itself too. I had some cabbage in here. This is red acre cabbage. And I'm not going to grow this to full size, but I want to harvest the leaves, you know, for my salads. There was a fourth plant right over there. Got eaten down by a rabbit that I let in. The melons, you know, I just showed you a bunch of those. Another tomato plant that self-seeded, probably the compost tomato variety. This is pak choy or bok choy. Self-seeded. Amazing plant. All the ones that I seeded got really um, leggy. They didn't make it. Still have beets in here from the spring. They're still delicious, not woody. So I'll be clearing out this space. But this is a pak choy that fell and grew on its own. So I feel like this is a good space. The pak choy, bok choy, two different varieties, same type of plant. I planted behind me, they just didn't do well. But this tells me this could be a great space for growing that. Another zucchini plants in there. No powdery mildew except on that bottom leaf. So the mildew is creeping over, even spaced out. And that's my point, is powdery mildew isn't going to sit in your soil and you don't have to dump out your soil, you don't have to sterilize your soil. It floats in the air, it overwinters. So when you have diseases, you don't have to spend money in resoiling your garden um, in any way. You do have to figure out a routine of sprays, but these pests and diseases are going to show up. Another place over here was where I had all my kale. I want to show you what I set up for that. Um, I put in six kale plants, maybe something like that, again for the leafy greens. Tomato plant in here grew itself, doing really well. So you can see, let's see if we can get the crow. These are the crows you hear all the time. Everyone's like, you run a crow soundtrack in the background. You don't have crows. No, I do. There's a murder of them, 12 of them that have been living here since I got here. Chicken wire, just across the top. The rabbit came in, chewed them down. I hit them with a water-soluble fertilizer yesterday, and the leaves are growing back already. So they're going to survive. But, you know, you can have a great garden, fenced in, protected. One night, animals can, you know, wipe it out. So you really do want to be thinking about the protection. So the main garden is pretty well set up. Even on this pumpkin, I haven't been able to find any female flowers so i don't think i'm going to get any pumpkins but it's just a beautiful pumpkin plant these are, oh wait here's one so we'll see i don't know how long it's going to take to grow but we'll see how fast they grow and again i'm experimenting i'm going to probably stick with this variety and i'll show you where it's going to go <laughs> i don't remember what i was saying before that all right so maybe it'll come back to me let's go out here to the other gardens this is outside my fence Poblanos, jalapenos, doing really well. Keeping up on the watering. I'm going to be stressing that really forever now. I am trying to grow some onions. So onions, I've mentioned in different formats, are biennials. So if you drop in seeds now, or very young plants like I did, transplants, if they don't get large enough, they're going to still think they're first-year plants. They'll overwinter here. And then come spring, they'll take off, think they're still a one-year-old plant, and they're going to bulb and do beautifully. In Maryland, that's where I'm at, the ground does freeze late December, January, February, but onions should be able to take it. So when you do transplants, they're going to all look really beat up like this. These are, I think, three days old. Water them every day for a good seven to ten days. Remember, they only have roots, like right around the tip, even if the soil is soaking wet. To depth, they don't have any roots to get to it. The onions over here are past seven days old, and you can see that they've all uprighted themselves and they're all coming back. All you want them to do is really establish. Have some peas in here. This protects them from the rabbits and the deer. Cleaning up this section, that ladder was used to be inside my garden. I'm going to put some sort of raised bed under here and I'm going to grow stuff out here. I really want to try and open up 
everything well I really want to take out things in there that I don't need so I open up the space and have more airflow next year I'm gonna I think I'm gonna catalog in the um, video series that I'm talking about doing the Rustic Garden Homestead show all the produce that comes out by weight so people can get a sense of how much they can pull out of a garden and I'll be talking about you know number of plants production weight all that kind of stuff uh, something kind of fun who knows still working on it potatoes that I planted um, I guess what was that maybe July they're doing really well late July had some melons in there a deer did get in and chew them down but you know beautiful watermelon back there the pumpkins might be going in here so my first second wave of potatoes well at least the first wave of potatoes will go in potatoes and melons will go in after that I'll be able to harvest the potatoes but I'll be giving up some space because you saw how big that plant is to being able to grow late season potatoes potatoes are a wonderful crop like people should really try growing them more we're going to go over to my other garden and in there I have potatoes that were my second round of potatoes in containers and they finished up like four weeks ago but I'm just storing them in the containers I'm going to show you what's in there sunflowers look great well <laughs> they don't look great they look done but they did great so there's lots of seeds in there I'll be collecting the seed heads scattering them around I know that one is filled with um, seeds and I will scatter them through my property a lot more along these edges to see what comes up here's where that bean plant is growing doing really really well I see another butternut squash that I missed when harvesting or not harvesting but taking down the vines that again was two butternut squash plants there's another one right over there and you know I guess it's a good point place to show the whole garden more than enough food for two people so I'm going to be working on a strategy maximize food so that I get what we need have enough to give away etc but I just don't want to waste any the muscadines let's go in there that might be hard to get camera wise then we'll go into here people ask me must what are muscadines they're like grapes they grow their fruit on new growth so you hack these back a whole lot they're just beautiful and they'll get this kind of gold color see if we can do contrast they're just hard and sour like that but now they're kind of spongy like a grape they taste like cotton candy to me they do really well they're almost impossible to kill off and you can see all the muscadines there and you can see this is a, a nice ripe batch their color changes they are delicious they do have seeds um, usually two or three per but just a wonderful flavor they'd be great to, to juice them too so this is a garden that I was trying to grow different stuff in there was growing my Portugal plants in there some of them did well leeks there's the potato bags I'm going to show you the peppers from Portugal I'm letting them dry I'm going to save those seeds eggplant did well but the muscadines were cut all the way back to the other side of the um, cattle panel and they just take over you know great growth onions still left over so here's a bag I've been harvesting out of let's see if I put a date on here nope just the Kennebex so I've been coming out here and just pulling out there's probably not too many left in here potatoes to eat for for breakfast out of the bag so I'm not even curing them and these these went in on April 3rd that seems early um, but it could have been possible I think maybe this group was early and the group over there was later hard to keep track my point being is that after the greenery all died off they just sat in these containers and it's a little bit cooler over here there's a little bit more shade and the potatoes have been lasting you know so they go and say April 3rd take about 80 days 
So that would be May, June, somewhere in July it has all the greenery, dies off. So from July on, they've just been sitting in here. Uh, so, red Pontiacs, and look. They're starting to grow too again. So if you leave them in there, they're going to restart. But red Pontiacs, I'll be doing a whole video on this, so I don't want to take them all out on what you can get out of here. More, I mean, look. So it's definitely worth growing potatoes in containers. Let's go over here real quick. And I'm, I keep trying to figure out what am I going to do with this space? Lots of weeds. And we have potatoes in here. You don't want to be growing. So this is one people always ask me, do you use grass clippings as mulch? I do. But if your grass clippings or your lawn starts to have these seed heads, don't use that because you could have seeds spread throughout your garden. So these will all get pulled and they'll get thrown into my wooded area. In this space, it's all set up for growing wine cap mushrooms. I should get another round of them soon. Shadier, have a metal roof on top, keep that shaded. Ramps are growing in these containers. They kind of taste like garlic. Um, they're, you know, wild collected. They only mature in the spring, so I'm letting them all establish. Got a weed head that's starting to flower. Definitely want to get rid of that. Here's my other ginger that has not been watered, but it stays shadier over here, so the water stays in there. This is just beautiful, you know. Ginger loves the warmth, the ambient temperatures around it, but it doesn't like having sun baked down on it. So you can grow ginger in a shadier area. Now this gets at least six hours of sunlight. Don't, Don't me. quote me as shadier being no sun. Six hours, eight hours, ginger should do fine. All right, let's head back out this way. So I am pretty much in transition, finally. I mean, I've been experimenting too, maybe we'll end with that. That I've been putting in cool weather crops since August 3rd, seeing how they do taking notes and I'm trying to figure out the time like this. You don't want the grass seeds here drying and then falling right into your compost pile or you'll be spreading them throughout your garden. Taking notes and trying to figure out the perfect time to roll in radishes, cool weather crops. I did forget one place so I want to show you the lettuce. Look at the beans like right over there from the trellis. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to skip over there so we don't have to do a long walk. We'll be able to see it from this side. So here's some cool weather crops. They went in, I don't know if I can see a date real quick, on 829. So that was a good two weeks ago, almost 20 days ago. The radishes are coming up, growing more slowly than the radishes that were here that went in on August 31st. There's no roots in there. These are daycon radishes back there. But I wanted to show you the lettuce. This is romaine. Um, you can see, if you have good eyes, it says August 5th. Romaine did really well. So I'll be loading up this space here with romaine lettuces next year, based on my notes, beginning of August. These are all gonna get transplanted. I'm gonna be doing a video on it throughout my garden. And I'll be able to grow basically romaine transplants without having to start seed cells, without having to water the seed cells, without having to keep them. And that's one of the goals is to grow more but work less. So I am trying to consolidate stuff into similar spaces and all that. Now is the time to change things up, try new things, experiment, have fun with your garden. And even though you might be a little burned out from the summer, try and get in some cool weather crops. Radishes, lettuce, spinach, kale. Don't overdo it, but just something to have growing through September and October. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And remember, you're not supposed to know everything first year, fifth year, even 10th year. Just learn, keep growing, and have a great time. Thanks for watching.